So in engineering and mathematics or science, uh, there's a lot of definitions that are used when deriving equations or theorems and so forth. And a really fundamental one is the right-hand coordinate system. And the reason why is that all, a lot of theorems in mathematics or engineering depend on the right-hand coordinate system. So if you define your coordinate system in, in a different way, you have to accommodate for that when you when you uh, solve problems. If you don't, you will legitimately get the wrong answer simply because you orientate your axes in different ways. So the correct way to, dr um, to draw your coordinate system is by having the x-axis pointing to the left of you like this, or, um, and, and then they have the y-axis on the bottom like that, and then put a z right there. So the positive z-axis points up, the positive x-axis points a little to the left and downward, and then the positive y-axis points a little to the right and downward. And obviously this is not the only orientation that you could have. You could imagine grabbing this um, coordinate system and, and, and flipping it or rotating it in some sort of way, and that will stay uh, consistent um, with the right-hand coordinate system. So what I'm saying, you could point the, the x-axis in this direction and then the y-axis in this direction and the z-axis in this direction. That is a valid right-handed coordinate system. Now you may be asking why is this valid? Why is this valid? Because this doesn't look like that but that doesn't look like that. And the reason why I know that um, to generalize this concept is that I cross J will always give you positive K. And if you guys don't know this uh, this orientation, we'll learn about that in the future. But this, uh, this is the idea that you take the unit vector in the I direction, or in the X direction, which is I, and this, this unit vector in the J, and when you do the cross product, when you do the cross product, we'll learn this later. If you don't understand this now, just understand that you need a coordinate system that looks like this. But um, when you take the cross product, you get a perpendicular vector to both these vectors simultaneously. And the direction it points, points in the positive z direction. So this is by definition the right-hand coordinate system. And um, so you can use different coordinate systems, but it's not traditional or conventional. And you, if you want to use different coordinate systems, that's fine. You just have to accommodate for that. For example, if you drew your axes like this, like the previous, so x, y, but instead you threw, you drew the z in this direction, you have to accommodate for that. So in this case, i cross j, so this is i, this is j. So if you do i cross j, this will get, the real answer will be pointing in this direction. This is the real like z um, vector or z unit vector. But since you defined z positive in this direction, what you would have to do is that you have to define your coordinate system like this. Uh, this is not a valid syntax, but you have to define it like that simply because you move this z axis orientation into this direction. So when you do all mathematics, all your um, problem solving, you have to include this neg negative side when you solve problems. But you know that seems complicated already, like with the problems already being complicated and you add on another layer of difficulty by adding a negative sign to arbitrary variables in your equations, it, it's not worth it. So Overall, you should always use a right-hand coordinate system, and that's simply because it's easier to remember because they're all positive numbers. It's easier to work with because they're all positive numbers, and a lot of dev uh, derivations depend on a right-hand coordinate system. So um, it's easier to use this. You can use this, but you just got to remember you have to accommodate for this negative sign. So that's all I have to say. This very fundamental concept has helped a lot. So the video is over, but I just want to go. I just want to share a short story of how I learned about this. 
So it was the first week in di or statics class. And, you know, I never, I haven't been, this is like my first, second year, or second year? I think it was my second year. Second or first year in college. And uh, I have yet to experience any engineering class besides my intro course. And my intro, cor intro course were very two, uh, solve two-dimensional problems, you know, so understanding vectors and understanding various concepts of mechanical engineering in a very algebraic sense. Um, so we didn't have many three-dimensional problems. So statics was actually like the first course that introduced me to like three-dimensional problems in engineering. And, you know, I didn't understand this orientation, um, which is surprising because I went through all the calculus courses that the, the, uh, that the, um, college provided and I still didn't know this right hand coordinate system which is kind of I don't know maybe it was lack of my studying or I don't know but uh yeah so I learned this the first week when I went to discussion and someone asked like you can't define it that way and you know it just hit me and so I realized I was solving the reason why we're getting incorrect answers because I was doing I was drawing axes that look like this because I didn't understand the idea of the right hand rule and its implications and its derivations how a lot of problems depend on this um, axis or this coordinate system. So I just wanted to share with you that there's just little moments I'll, I'll go through as I go through these different lectures and different classes, little moments where I, I realize this, this is when I learned something new. This is like when I actually learned something new that actually helped me. There's that. Um, look forward to the next video.